Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup, 19th August 2017. I am Sagan Nandi, Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit, a company based in Singapore. I will not take time to introduce myself. If you are interested to know more about me, the company Superior Profit, or more importantly, how it can help in your trading, you may visit the website www.superiorprofit.co and click on the about menu. Before we begin, let's go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on Superior Profit's trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior Profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior Profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. As usual, we will look at oil, gold, India's nifty futures, and few forex pairs through Q global technical charts. And we will do the same for USA broad market ETFs, that is SPY, QQQ, DIA, and IWM. Before going into broad market internal analysis, sector and industry analysis using key graphs and ranking table. Along the way, we may go through some of the posts in the community and look for potential trades for the coming week. Q&A is throughout the session. You may use the Q&A panel to ask questions and I will try to answer them as I go along. That was the last slide of the presentation. Let's move to live system. Let's start with analyzing US oil. We are looking at USO using weekly backdrop chart on the left hand side and daily hop on chart on the right hand side. Last week, US oil dropped right from the memory resistance line. And we had discussed how using Q fine tune template, we could take very profitable gap short day trade on that day. That was a very profitable trade. And if one exited partial position, the remaining position could be held for a few more days for increased profit. This week on Friday, US oil sharply reverted back up and closed above the yellow direction line as well as the cyan and the magenta direction lines. In a way, you can say that it is now creating a go with flow long trade setup. In the daily chart, we have a strongly bullish shape candle and also flow candle color is bullish. The relative performance, that is the white line, is sharply going up on Friday. The movement indicators are green. Activity on Friday was high, though not very or extreme high. In the weekly chart, we see that the candle shape is bullish with a long lower tail, and also the backdrop candle color is bullish, that is cyan. So this meets all the requirements of the unambiguous checklist for go with flow trend following long trade. One might consider taking a long trade, except only one factor, that is, there is a memory resistance line nearby. And if somebody took a long at the close of Friday, the potential profit, that is distance from entry price to the memory resistance line, is smaller relative to potential risk, that is the distance from the entry price to the stop loss. So by end of Friday, this was probably a bit late to enter a long trade in US oil. However, if somebody was watching US oil using Q fine tune template, they could probably enter a long somewhere in the middle of the candle or on the lower side of the candle of Friday. And they could see that US oil is giving a go with flow long trade setup using sonar in real time. If they looked at the Q fine tune chart, I think they had a very profitable trade opportunity. 
let's look at the fine tune chart on friday we see that after market open using the q fine tune template in this case i'm using 10 minute interval the standard interval is five minute but you may use 10 minute if you want to in this case after market open the early range high and early range low were formed and it broke above the early range high on this candle so one could enter a long on this candle put a stop loss below the day's low that is at this price level that stop was never hit instead price sharply went up looking at the real time pivot lines one could book partial profit at this green color line or profit could be booked at the white pause line as it sharply closed higher partial position could be held overnight so this is a case where one could start a trade as a day trade but looking at the at a glance template that is at weekly and daily chart at end of day one might decide to hold partial position as a two-day trade or maybe even as a swing trade that would increase profit and even if on monday us oil starts going down there is less likelihood that it will go back to the entry price very quickly probably one will have chance to exit the trade with profit even if us oil started to go down on monday so at the end of the day us oil is bullish however we see that the reward risk ratio is not acceptable to start taking a swing trade on monday if somebody had entered a trade on friday that would be great now i mentioned in last class in detail that on this candle magenta candle we had a very profitable gap short day trade opportunity that was also taking advantage of the existence of the memory resistance line now this kind of trade setup is not a one-off case we keep on seeing such trades where a stock or etf or futures reverses from memory resistance or support line this thing happened in gold this week let us have a look at gold gold was going up and i had mentioned earlier that it already had higher high higher low by the time price came here so we could look for go with flow long trade and we saw a cyan color candle came but price was already very close to upper boundary so we were not going to enter a long trade after that you see that a bearish headwind formed that gave us a very significant drop the very next day so if somebody took advantage of the bearish headwind to enter a short trade profit would be booked the very next day remember for any bearish headwind short trade the profit target is near the value area not the lower boundary line and this was a significant drop so profit would be booked the very next day if somebody took a shot on this bearish headwind signal now i mentioned that there was also a profitable short trade opportunity looking at the memory resistance in gold that came on friday friday price opened with a very big gap up and we see from open it fell sharply so again using q fine tune template this gave us a very profitable gap short trade opportunity and we could also see in the daily chart existence of the watermark resistance line and somewhat below the existence of memory resistance line so using these two resistances in the daily chart and the fact that it was a gap short day trade opportunity on q fine tune template we could easily take a short day trade that was very profitable let's look at the q fine tune template 
here we are looking at gld using q52 template five minute chart we can see on friday the price opened with a gap up this was the opening price on friday and this green line was the high of thursday so it had a significant gap up open soon after that the early range high and the early range low lines were drawn automatically on the q fine tune chart and if you remembered the daily chart you saw that the watermark resistance was exactly around this early range high level so we had added support for taking a short trade when price closed below early range low on this candle we will not take a short immediately because it had a very long lower tail however we will be happy to take a short trade on this solid yellow candle that also closed below early range low and it was a bearish shaped candle overall our stop will be just above early range high that was never touched instead price continued to fall down we could exit at least partial position at the pause line by that time much more than the risk distance was covered partial position could be held and that could be exited at the end of the day so this was another example of taking advantage of watermark resistance and memory resistance line on daily chart and a gap short day trade setup in the fine tune chart to take very profitable trade in gold in the short direction this could be traded both using the etf itself gld or using options on gld there is a question on how to set the stop loss on daily chart for swing trading we like to put the stop for a long trade just below the recent low so if somebody was going to take a long trade maybe on this candle yellow candle which was creating a false downside breakout with exertion that is very activity so this was a potential box long trade opportunity if somebody took a long trade at this point the stop loss will be just below recent low exactly where that is decided by the q protection signal that is available in the hop off template if i change to the hop off template it shows that the maximum risk that one is supposed to take for such a long trade on this candle will be at this price level so the entry price would be around this level maximum stop loss would be around this level and once gld started to go up when it came to the white direction line by that time more than the risk distance was covered so at least partial position would be booked afterwards gld went up but that is after the fact seeing the existence of the declining yellow line and flat white line at that time q traders would surely book at least partial profit at this price level now when you use the q protection signal in this way you may see that it is some distance away from the recent low that calculation is based on the recent volatility of the instrument in this case gld happened to be very volatile so the stop was placed safe distance away from the recent low if i see that the distance is somewhat far from the recent low i may use it in multiple ways one is i don't take the trade at all because the potential risk may be too high or the other approach i sometimes follow is i place a gtc order at this price level but keep an eye on the instrument so in this case my gtc order will be at this level however if gold came down and broke this low 
closed somewhere at this price level, then I will anyway close the long position. That is how I use the Q protection signal if it is somewhat away from the recent low as was in this case. However, overall you will see that the Q protection signal works very well. It keeps the stop safe distance away while moving it upward as the instrument goes higher and higher. If I clear the chart, you will see that in this case, when we entered a long on this trade, as gold started to go up, the stop loss was also going up. And on this candle, even though it had a gap down open, we see that our stop was safe distance away, very precisely calculated, very nicely calculated. And it would be stopped out only at this price level. How I use it as a trailing stop is once the partial profit is booked and I let profit run, then I may use the Q protection signal to keep on moving my stop up for a long position. By that, I am assured of some profit because I have booked partial profit already. And for the remaining position, I can let profit run for as long as the instrument goes up. In this case, I will get stopped out at this top level. Yes, that's it. this is great use of Q protection signal for entry stop, for break even stop, and also for trailing stop. Let me explain the break even stop. In this case, we entered the long trade at this price level. Our initial stop loss using GTC order will be at this price level. Then you see as GLD was moving up, the stop was also moving up. Now on this day, that is on this candle, our Q protection signal was telling that stop loss is to be moved here, which was above our entry price. Until that time, I would not like to move my initial stop. But when the Q protection level moves beyond my entry price, I am happy to move my stop to the new Q protection level. That is the use of Q protection as a break even stop. From that point onward, I am assured of no loss into the trade. And from there on, I don't move the stop until I book partial profit. That is my general approach. Once I book partial profit, which will be at the white and yellow direction line in this case, then I move my stop to the new stop level indicated by protection signal. And that is the point from where I start using trailing stop using the same Q protection signal. So initially it is used for initial stop, then it is used for break even stop. And once partial profit is booked, I make use of the same signal for trailing stop. If we look at the right edge of the chart, then GLD is having mixed signal. Overall, it is in uptrend. It has higher high and higher low. However, it came to the watermark resistance level, both in daily chart and weekly chart, and came down sharply from there. So we are not sure whether GLD will go up from here or down from here. So we are not anticipating any trade right now. We will stand aside until there is clearer signal on GLD. This is different from US oil, where we saw more bullish indication than bearish or indecision. Let's now look at India's Nifty futures. We are looking at India's Nifty future, that is the broad market index future, using weekly backdrop template on the left hand side, daily hop on template on the right hand side. Last week we discussed that 
using the bearish headwind signal in the weekly as well as the daily followed by the magenta flow color candle at pendulum high which was indicated by the thumbs down we could take a very profitable swing short trade then price came to the yellow direction line also the lower boundary so profit would be booked at that point there was also a memory support line at that time around this price level so that would also be a profit taking price level now we see that it is starting to go down however at the right edge it has two memory support lines nearby and friday's candle was bullish shape in the daily chart so we are not going to take any short trade right now and there is no long trade setup so we will stand aside there is a question do i do anything different for buying calls when the initial stop is somewhat far i think like it was in the case of gld that i showed now if the stop loss is far i said we have two possible options one is to stand aside we don't have to take a trade if we see the stop loss is far there are many many trades in the market it's okay to stand aside from a particular setup also as i mentioned in cases like the gld chart that i showed i may put the gtc order following the q protection signal but i keep an eye on the instrument if it breaks below recent low i will close the trade so i don't need to realize the maximum loss that is indicated by the q protection signal another thing to remember we never take a trade in superior profit way unless the potential profit is comparable to potential risk so whether the stop loss is far or near is not that important i mentioned in the last class that if we have on average profit higher than on average stop loss then we just need to keep repeating those trades and do risk management so that in every trade we risk same amount of capital whether the stop loss is a bit far or not doesn't matter so long as our potential profit target is also correspondingly far the other option is to use verticals when we are trading options it is possible to use verticals and if the trade goes against us for some time and then starts to reverse then one leg will be profitable the other leg will be losing but as it is starting to reverse we may close the profitable leg and then hold on to the other leg letting it turn into profit as the stock reverses back in our intended direction so with options many such flexibilities exist however as i always say if somebody is not able to make profit with stocks trading options will only speed up their money losing probably about 10 times faster i always suggest to make consistent profit with stock first if you are able to do that then is the right time in my view to start trying options not in the beginning if you are not able to make money using stock i don't think it is possible to make money using options back to few forex pairs let us look at australian dollar we are looking at australian dollar using backdrop weekly chart on the left hand side hop on daily chart on the right hand side two weeks ago i mentioned that the candles in daily and at that time the candle in the weekly both were indecisive so i was not able to anticipate where the price will go on wednesday price went up sharply so we could see that there was a higher high and higher low and a cyan color bullish shape candle 
so that was meeting the requirements of go with flow long trade in the daily chart however you see in the weekly chart the candle color was still yellow if it is yellow at the end of friday then i can anticipate that it was also yellow on wednesday because wednesday's close was actually lower than friday's close so if we use the unambiguous checklist it was not allowing us to take a trend following long trade and that is the safety net of the unambiguous checklist it doesn't allow us to take a trade unless it is safe meaning we have not only the signals bullish in the daily chart but we also have some tailwind from a longer time frame that is weekly chart for swing trading and in this case the weekly candle backdrop color was neutral that is yellow and therefore though the daily chart checklist conditions were met on the cyan candle for trend following long trade we will not take the long the same is true on friday we have again a cyan color candle however the weekly candle color is still neutral so we will not take any go with flow long swing trade right now and it is in overall uptrend with higher high and higher low so we are not going to try any short trade either for day trading at the right edge it looks more bullish than bearish so one may look for only bullish trades using q fine tune real time chart for day trading purpose let's look at sing dollar if we look at sing dollar through the weekly and daily chart we see that there is some indecision it was moving in narrow range for some days tried to go down however these two days ended with long lower tail candles since then it is again moving sideways in the weekly chart we see for three successive weeks the closing price is at nearly same level not exactly same but nearly same level on a closing basis in the weekly chart and it is also showing memory resistance line and memory support line interestingly this week price tried to go above the memory resistance but you can see it was pulled down and closed precisely at the memory resistance level let's now look at usa broad market etfs for that we'll use trade station we start with spider spy s p 500 etf looking at it using weekly backdrop chart on the left hand side daily hop on chart on the right hand side there was a bearish headwind in spy one week ago and since then price fell down spy is now down for two successive weeks last week i had mentioned that price was already down close to the yellow direction line so we were not going to take any short trade at that point and i mentioned that if price goes up and tilts down we would have a go with flow short trade opportunity that opportunity came on thursday however if somebody waited till the end of day then it was too late to enter the short trade on the other hand some of us anticipate the trade based on what we discussed in last class so on thursday when the market opened the candle color was already starting to be magenta it was not green or yellow anymore somewhere in the middle of the candle it was already magenta using that and using q fine tune template one could take a short trade somewhere in the middle of the candle that could be initiated as a day trade and as spy fell sharply actually hit the lower boundary on the same day at least partial profit could be booked let us look at the q fine tune chart as of thursday this is spy chart using q fine tune template 10 minute interval 
I'm using 10 minute interval so that I can see both Thursday as well as Friday's price move on the same screen. Based on our analysis, we were already waiting for a go with flow short trade in the daily chart. So in the Q fine tune real time chart, we were going to look for only short trade, not long trade. That is how we take day trades. One of the ways that we follow that we decide on the day trades direction using daily chart and look for potential trade on real time fine tune chart only in that pre decided direction. So in this case, it would be short direction on Thursday after market open the early range high and early range low lines were formed. The range was narrow enough that allowed us to take a short trade on this candle. Our stock will be just above daily high entry price using 10 minute chart will be at this price level. And by the time price hit the pause line, the white automatically drawn pivot level, we already had more profit than the risk that we took. And at least partial profit could be booked. As price continued to fall down, we could book some more profit at the next pause level. And at the end of the day, we would like to close the trade. At the end of the day, price was already close to lower boundary. So we would not like to continue holding it as a two day trade or swing trade. So in this case, we'll initiate the trade as price went below early range low, book partial profit at the pause price levels and close the entire trade at the end of the day. Let's look at the other ETFs. Dia, this was the strongest among the four USA broad market ETFs. On Thursday, this gave a proper go with flow short trade, similar to SPY. By the end of the day, price was not yet close to the lower boundary or yellow direction lines. One could take a go with flow short trade even at the end of the day on Thursday. And on Friday, price dropped. It didn't quite hit the yellow line or the lower boundary, but there was good profit. One could either book some profit or hold on to the trade. There is a question about partial profit. Is it 50% or something else? That's a good question. Let me answer it. I have two different approaches. Suppose I am trading with futures, just as an example, so that I don't have to calculate stocks, etc. Let's say I am trading short using Dow Jones futures, three lots. If I trade three lots, I open the trade on this candle next day. When I have some profit, I have two different choices. One is I can book profit on two lots on this day and then keep my stop loss at the original stop loss. And by doing that, even if price went back to the original stop loss, usually it will not make any overall loss in the trade. That is by closing two third of the position at my initial profit target. However, if I book 50% of my position at my initial profit target, then I cannot leave my stop at the original stop loss because if the original stop loss is hit, the trade will not make any money. So if I book 50% profit, I would like to move my stop to break even. Even if the break even stop is hit, I still have some profit. Between these two approaches, I prefer the initial approach because the likelihood of hitting the initial stop is much lower than the likelihood of hitting the break even stop. And if the downtrend continues, you will see many times it will hit the break even stop and then it will fall again. So if you could hold on to the trade with initial stop or maybe using trailing stop, then you will have better chance at letting profit run. These are the two possibilities. For stocks also, you can keep that in mind when entering positions. Either you can do 
multiple of 200 shares or multiple of 300 shares. That will simplify the calculation. For options, multiple of two lots or multiple of three lots. That's my approach. Always take some money from the market. We never know what is going to happen next. So if my initial profit target is hit, I always book profit. I should add another comment. When the market is non-directional, it's not going up, going down, then it is better to book full profit at the initial profit target. But when the market is directional, then it is better to hold on to partial position. In recent periods, though the ETFs were going up, SPY, QQQ, DIA, it was going up with not much conviction. There are other times when the broad market doesn't go up or down at all, just move sideways. In both those cases, it is better to book profit at the initial profit target because mostly it will hit stop loss before going in your direction, if it at all goes in your direction. So in indecisive market, book full profit at the initial profit get for swing trade. However, in directional market, it pays better to hold on to partial position. Let's look at QQQ. In QQQ, we had a bearish headwind in the weekly chart and for three weeks, it fell. This week it closed just above the weekly memory support line. So if somebody was having a short position in QQQ or maybe in some technology stocks and there was profit, one would book full profit. One would not hold on to the trade, hoping that price will continue to move in the short direction. In daily also, we see price closed just at the yellow direction line so we are not sure where price will go from here. It's already a bit late to take any go with flow short trade because we had a big drop on Thursday and price is sitting right at the yellow direction line and also at the watermark support level. So we are not going to initiate any short trade. Any short trade that was taken in QQQ would be closed fully by end of Friday. There is no trade signal at the right edge of the chart. Let's look at IWM. We discussed in the previous classes that IWM was the weakest of the four ETFs. After the bear release signal on this candle four weeks ago, it fell for four weeks. Quite a significant drop. And we discussed using the bear release signal in the daily chart. Somebody was watching IWM regularly could take a very profitable short trade. At the right edge, it is sitting right on top of the wide direction line. So again, if somebody was holding a short position, at the end of Friday, the entire position will be closed because it is sitting on significant support on the daily chart. At the right edge, there is no trade signal. Let's now look at broad market sector and industries using graphs and then using ranking table. Every week we look at broad market internals using NASDAQ composite index weekly chart on the left hand side and NYSC composite index weekly chart on the right hand side. We can see that now NASDAQ has dropped for four successive weeks on a closing basis, whereas NYSC has dropped for two successive weeks on a closing basis. So NASDAQ is weaker than NYSE now. Again, the bearish headwind in the weekly chart could anticipate the potential down move. In terms of longer term weekly chart, both the indices are still in uptrend. It will take a while before they come into downtrend, that is shows lower high and lower low. In terms of internals, we see that four of the internals, this one, this one, this one, and this one actually increased. However, they increased very little from last week and the new high lows closed significantly below zero level. The internals are showing mixed picture. 
four of them actually increased and four of them closed below zero. So in summary, we can say that in the longer term weekly chart, the indices continue to be in uptrend. It will take a while before they come into downtrend. The internals continue to be weak not able to surpass previous highs. And we see after the divergence of the new high-low peaks, it fell down sharply, both for NASDAQ and NYSE. Specifically for this week, we see that the internals are mixed, that is neutral. Because this study is using broad market composite indices and weekly charts, any analysis using this has to be used only for long-term investment decision, not for swing trading and not for day trading. Let's now look at the sector and industry analysis. Every week we look at sector performance by analyzing 11 different sectors across three time periods. Red bar represents performance of this week, yellow bar performance of one week prior to red bar, and blue bar represents performance of two weeks prior to the yellow bar. Together, they constitute four weeks or about one month of performance. This week, we see five of the 11 sectors are up and six are down. So this is having a mixed picture. However, down sectors decline by much bigger percentage than the up sectors. We can see telecom declined energy decline heavily again. Energy is the worst decliner of this week again. Consumer discretionary is a big decliner this week. And we will find that out from the industry analysis as well. And compare that with the gains of utility, which is the biggest, but still smaller than the decliners. Information technology, very, very small increase. Same for real estate and materials. So overall, though in terms of numbers, it has a mixed picture. When we look at the actual percentages, we can see that overall the market continues to be bearish, though not as bearish as last week. Because last week, I think 10 out of 11 sectors were bearish. Last week, we saw several financial industries were among worst ranked decliners. So in the last class, I discussed that if somebody was holding banking stocks, hoping for a move up, better to be cautious and protect the profit using stop loss, that analysis was useful as financials weakened. Several stocks had profitable Q short trades. JPM had a go with flow trend following short trade this week. And the financial ETFs, FAS and XLA both declined. Let's look at JPM, FAS, and XLF using technical charts. In JPM, on Wednesday, we had a bearish magenta color candle in the daily chart. It was already having lower high and lower low. So by the end of that day, it gave us a confirmed go with flow short trade. Stop loss will be just above the recent high and we like to book profit at the ascending yellow direction line. And the yellow direction line was hit on Thursday, so at least partial profit will be booked on Thursday itself. One could hold on to the remaining position, but on Friday, one will close it. Why one will close it on Friday is because of two reasons. One is there is a watermark support level but that is not the main reason. A watermark resistance is likely to be broken by a stock that is moving down with a go with flow short trade setup. However, in this case, it will be closed looking at the financial ETFs. Let's look at FAS and XLF. Last week, we discussed that it is better to be cautious with financial stocks and financials dropped this week. At the right edge of the chart, FAS is also sitting on top of watermark support level. Again, watermark supports are supposed to be broken. 
So it is not because of FAS chart that I said that a JPM short trade needed to be closed fully. I said that looking at the XLF chart. Let's look at XLF. In XLF, we see that price dropped this week. However, on Friday, it is sitting right on top of the memory support line. It had very high activity on Thursday when it declined. And on Friday, on a closing basis, it actually closed higher. That's why the activity bar is green. The candle shape is still bearish. It still closed just below the yellow direction line. That is all bearish. However, it went up from the memory support line. Looking at that, if I was holding a swing short position in any financial stock, and which was already hitting my profit target, I would like to book full profit and not hope for profit to run in the next week. In this way, I look at the stocks where I am taking swing trade and I also look at its industry, either using the Q Edge industry ranking table or using any ETF or index for that stocks industry. That helps me to decide whether to book partial profit or to book full profit. Back to the sector performance, FAS and XLF both declined as we anticipated. However, XLF is now at memory support. So any short position in financial may keep an eye on this. Last week, energy industries were worst performance. And I had mentioned that any short positions might continue to hold the trades. This week energy declined further. This week, just as it was in last week also, energy is now not up. It should be energy is now down for all the review periods in QA analysis from five days, 10 days, one month, two months, all the way to 12 months or one year. Interestingly, US oil went up sharply on Friday. So last week we had mentioned that short positions in energy might continue to hold, but this week we changed that view because USO went up sharply on Friday. Looking at that, any profitable short position in oil industries may either book full profit on Friday or tighten stock. There is no reason to let profit erode from a profitable trend. Later on, we will see that there may be a long opportunity in a stock that is not directly in oil industry, but provides fracking sand to oil and gas industry. And we'll identify that from QH ranking table. And you will see that how we are able to combine the commodities like oil, how it moved up on Friday, then we look at the individual stocks, and then we look at the industries which were weak for a long time starting to gain strength. If we do that, we will see that there is a possible long opportunity, not yet, but maybe coming soon in a company that provides fracking sand. And when we align all these edges, the industry strength, the commodity oil itself going up, and the stocks, technical chart, maybe stocks fundamentals also using QHITA, we are able to take a trade more confidently and overall our profit tends to be higher than people who just look at technical charts or those who just look at fundamentals. Let's look at the industries. Best performers are now spread across diverse industries. There is no clear pattern of similar multiple industries going up. Last week, semiconductors were best rank improvers. And as we notice over and over again, if that happens in subsequent weeks, we expect semiconductors to be one of the best performing industry. So rank improvement often precedes an industry being one of the best performers. That happened again. Semiconductor equipment is now one of the best performers. This shows the value of analyzing not only the strong performing industries, but also the industries which are gaining rank. 
distillers and vintners also gained. Maybe if stock market starts to fall down, people drink more, not sure. But we may look at this company, Brown Foreman, BF.B. It had a profitable going through trend following long trade as distillers and vintners went up. So though the broad market fell, we could find profitable long trade opportunities. This could be identified using Q sonar. Let's look at BF.B using Q technical charts. This chart was quite interesting. Brown and Foreman. It was forming a base in the daily chart. It was hovering around the white direction line. And on this candle, that is Monday, we had a cyan color candle in the daily chart, that is bullish flow color. It closed above three direction lines at the same time and white direction line was close by. This doesn't happen all the time. Usually we see cyan color candle comes when it closes above the standard and fast direction line, that is cyan and magenta direction lines. Sometimes we see prices closing above three direction lines, which was true in this case. And white direction line, the fourth one was close by. When that happens, then we can say in a way that short term trader, long term trader, very long term traders, more and more people are becoming bullish on this stock because now it is going above all the direction lines. So we can take a long trade more confidently. Also, in this case, the stop loss was very narrow. It could be placed just below the memory support line. Our profit target will be at the upper boundary or at the watermark resistance level. On Thursday and on Friday, that price level was hit, so profit would be booked. Now, in this case, the industry continues to be strong, and there is no resistance line nearby. As I said, watermarks are supposed to be broken, so just the existence of watermark in daily chart is not a factor for closing the entire position. In this case, we will be happy to book partial profit either on Thursday or on Friday for a swing long trade that was initiated on Monday and we will be happy to hold on to partial position. The weekly chart is also pretty bullish that also justifies our decision to hold partial position and try to let profit run using trailing stop from now onward. There is a question how to find this setup on Monday that is done using Q sonar. In these classes, we usually look at top down analysis, looking at broad market sector analysis, industry analysis and finding stocks from there. However, we also have a very effective bottom-up analysis where we can find the stock using sonar first and then look up its industry and also look up its fundamentals. How we do that? If we are using meta stock, then we can go to power console, go to explorer, then we have all these Q explorers. So if we are looking for long trade, we have trade setups for for different market conditions, bounce for exhausting market, box for sideways market, go with flow for trend following and headwind for trend reversing market. We may run these setups. If we are looking for long, we can just run the long explorer. If we are looking for short, we can run the short explorer. If we are looking for long short both, we can run both. So usually I just select this and run it on a list of stocks that I am looking into. So for example, I have created a list of liquid stocks in Singapore that is not too low in price. By the way, for Singapore, $0.5 is quite good price. There are many stocks, 0.01. So whatever be your list of stocks, you can run the explorers on them. 
In fact, I ran Sonar on a Singapore stock this week and I shared that trade idea in the community. Let me have a look at that. I posted this SIIC at pendulum low and at a quarterly pivot. Two days ago, I shared this trade. Let me show you. I found it by running Q Sonar in the way I mentioned and it came out in the sonar of box trade setup. This is how the chart looked like at that time. The weekly backdrop chart on the left hand side, daily hop on chart on the right hand side. Q sonar found it. So it was not using top down approach. Once Q sonar found it, I plotted it using at a glance template that is backdrop chart and the daily hop on chart. And I saw that on that day, price went up with extreme high activity after quite long time. Candle flow color turned bullish. It closed above the cyan direction line and also magenta direction line. Price was at pendulum low indicated by the thumbs up signal and also we see there were two bull release signals, both were cyan color. That also shows it was at pendulum low. That is an attractively low price to take a swing long trade as well as a long term long investment. In the weekly chart also we had a bull release signal and a very bullish shaped candle. It met all the requirements of a box long trade setup except that I couldn't see any support level. Box long trade is to be taken only if price is bouncing up from a support level. So it was not there on this at a glance chart. But if we looked at the quarterly pivot chart, that is the other template decision template. I attached that chart also. Then I saw that price was actually reversing from two quarterly pivot levels. Price tried to come here and then was bouncing up from there. So I thought it could be a very low risk long trade in a company that is SIIC environment, which is actually in a defensive sector. It's related to utilities. And if the market starts to go down, then the defensive stocks tend to do better or hold on to their price levels better. So I thought this could be a good opportunity to take a low risk long trade. This is how I found the trade using Sonar and analyzed it using Q Global technical charts. I had also looked up the fundamentals using Q Vital. I always do that. It just takes two more minutes. I always look at the charts fundamentals before trading. Whether I use fundamentals in my trading decision or not, no harm knowing how the company is doing. There is a comment that it may be taking time to run Sonar. That is not true for me. Most of the Q traders can run Sonar 10 to 15 minutes before market close, go through the charts, maybe 10 or 20 of them. Each chart doesn't take more than, for me, it doesn't take more than 10 seconds. Shouldn't take more than 30 seconds for any of you. So long as you keep the unambiguous checklist in mind. The unambiguous checklist is available on the home page here. On our homepage, we have the swing trading with confidence in all possible market conditions. Under this heading, there are the four standard trade setups. Go with flow for trend following, then headwind, box, and bounce. And if you click on any of them, it will show you the checklist that is to be made for either a long position or a short position. In terms of daily chart, and below in terms of weekly chart. If you use it for a few days, after that you will not need to open it at all. I will show you. Let me finish today's session. I will actually run Sonar and show you how much time it takes. David is saying sometimes there are many. Could have taken trades, but rarely actionable. There are actionable trades also. And the trades I share in community, those are all found either using Q Sonar or using a top-down approach, but all are actionable. Okay, I, I'll try to run Sonar today. Let us go back to what we are looking into. 
So we looked at Brown Foreman and saw that even though the broad market was going down, we could have profitable long trades that we could identify using sonar. And then we could look up the Q edge industry ranking table in real time. We could see that the industry was also improving. So that would give us more confidence to take a long trade. Let's look at the worst performing industries. Six of the 10 worst performers are related to discretionary spending. And remember in sector analysis, we saw that consumer discretionary took a big hit. It declined heavily. And all of these six industries are related to retail, either footwear or textile apparel or home improvement retailers home furnishing retailers, all are related to retail, but not only apparel, not only textile, but also home improvement, home furnishing. That is why the consumer discretionary sector as a whole went down. The industry footwear, which is the worst performing this week, going down by 6.63%. Using sonar, we could have very profitable short trades in both CAL and NKE and both of them drop from resistance levels. It could be either watermark resistance or memory. We'll have to look at the chart, I don't remember. Cal had very profitable Q go with flow short trade. Again, could be identified using Q sonar. Nike had both headwind and box trade setup. Let's look at these two charts. Remember last week I had talked about two energy stocks which came to memory resistance line and fell from there. The same pattern keeps on repeating. That's why we have only few trade setups. We don't have 10, 20 trade setups. We have enough trades only using the trade setups we have. So CAL, which is in footwear industry, on this day had a go with flow short trade setup. And the fact that it was coming down from memory resistance line would give us more confidence to take a short trade. Now this precise candle had a long lower tail. So a Q trader is not going to enter a short at the end of this day, but rather use Q fine tune chart to enter a short next day, maybe using early range breakout. So the entry price will be here and profit target will be the lower boundary that was hit on Thursday. This is again a case where when the profit target was hit, there was no visible support in weekly or daily and the industry was weakening. So we could continue to hold partial position because the broad market was declining. The industry itself was weakening. There was no reason to book profit on full position. Partial position could be booked and try to let profit run on the remaining position. So it always pays to keep an eye on the memory resistance lines and go with flow signal coming after that. For CAL, we could identify the trade on this day using go with flow short sonar. Let's look at NKE. In NKE, we had a very big gap up on earnings. And since then, price tried to go above the watermark level. But on this day, there was a bearish headwind and price came below the watermark resistance. So it created a false upside breakout. So using that, one could take a headwind short trade on this yellow candle, put stop just above recent high. And for headwind trade, profit target is the value area. So in three days, profit will be booked. Again, price tried to go to the watermark level. It again created a false breakout. On this bear release day, a box short trade could be taken with very narrow stop loss. Partial profit could be booked on this magenta candle. Partial position could be held for letting profit run. Now this is one case where after booking partial profit, if we had moved stop to break even, the break even stop would be hit on this green candle. That is why I mentioned that it is much more likely that the break-even stop will be hit than the initial stop loss. That's why it is preferred 
at least for my own trading that I book two third of the position at initial profit target and leave the remaining one third with initial stop loss level. And once price tried to go to the break even price and then falls down, then I am free to use the trailing stop. Let's go back to industry analysis. We looked at worst performing industries. Now let's look at the rank improvers and decliners. Five of the rank improving industries relate to service providers to businesses. However, as the broad market looks weak, there may not be easy long trades right now. Instead, one may look for low risk Q short opportunities in industries that are weak, as shown by QH industry analysis. You may look at these support services that gained in rank, but remember the broad market is weak, so this may not be the time to look for long trades. However, I looked at specialty mining and metals and I came across this stock, Silica Holdings, that provide fracking sand to oil and gas industries. Because US oil went up sharply on Friday and because this industry was lagging for a long time and then improved rank significantly this week and that the stock is having a somewhat attractive looking technical chart, I thought it may be worth looking into this stock. Let's look at SLCA. By the way, if you see Q Vital, it shows that it has potential for short squeeze. That's another reason I thought it may be a good opportunity. Let's look at Q Vital and also look at Q Global technical charts. We are looking at U.S. Silica Holding using weekly backdrop template on the left hand side, daily hop on template on the right hand side. We see there is a bullish headwind signal in weekly. The candle shape is also bullish. In the daily chart, we have multiple bullish headwind signal. At the right edge, there is no Q trade setup. However, if it goes up, one may keep an eye on this. It is at a very low price at pendulum low. I can see that because the bull release and the headwind signals are coming in cyan color, not in green color. So there is no trade setup yet, but it may be worth keeping an eye on this company. Let's look at QH to see how this industry's rank is changing. So every time you open QH industry analyst, it analyzes the 255 industries, ranks them and applies a heat map. Specialty mining and metal. That is what caught my eye. It was weak for a long time, shown by the magenta color in the ranks. Then over last five days, it improved from 197 to 177. But you see over last two days and one day, it continued to increase rank. Now it is only 17 rank out of 255. So it is gradually getting stronger. And let's look at its fundamentals using Q Vita. We enter the root stock, get its peers by clicking the peer button, then click the calculator to get its fundamental score. We can go to the scorecard and we can see its earnings is not reliable. Internal value is very good the best possible score of 100, relative value is medium, neither very good, that is blue, nor very bad, that is magenta, is yellow neutral, medium. However, what caught my eye is that it has a potential for short squeeze, very high score. So if the stock started to go up from pendulum low, the short covering could fuel the rally. That is another reason I thought it may be worth keeping an eye on this stock. So this was looking at the industries with biggest rank improvers. Let's look at the biggest rank decliners. We saw earlier that GLD came down from memory resistance. Interestingly, several gold miners also declined precisely from memory resistance. Many of them, NEM, ABX, AEM, AU. Knowing memory resistance was near, you would not try to take new long trade. Instead, if you had a long trade, you will book full profit or tighten stock. In interest of time, I will not go through these stocks, but you may open them and see that 
the memory resistance had saved our profit in long position for each of them. Three of the 10 rank decliners relate to media and broadcasting. QH shows that cable and satellite is the most promising industry for potential short. Let me give high profit. This industry was strong for a long time and now weakened heavily. This is opposite to the industry of US silica holding. That industry was weak for a long time, now gained in strength, whereas several media broadcasters declined in rank, including cable satellite broadcasting media publishing, but cable and satellite has the most interesting QH profile. Let's look at that. Here, using QH, instantly we can see that cable and satellite was strong for a long time, from 10 days to Five days it rank declined from 10 to 58, but after that, over two days and one day, it declined much more. So, this is an optimal looking industry to look for swing short as well as long term short trend. So, sometimes I do bottom up analysis, run sonar first, sometimes I do top down analysis. So, for cable and satellite, I could click this button or use Control Shift S hotkey. It will show me some of the stocks in the industry. One is Charter Communications. Let's look at Charter Communications using Q Vital. Enter the root stock, get the PRs, click the calculator button to get the scorecard, go to scorecard, and we can see Charter Communications has very poor earnings quality. Earnings value is also very weak. There is no EPS growth. Revenue growth is very strong, doesn't pay any dividend. Relative value score is neutral. So you could look at charter communication. Let's look at the chart, CHTR. Charter communication went up very strongly over a long time. At the right edge, we see that after earnings, it gapped up, but then fell down for a few days. As is quite common, it tries to go back to the high created by the earnings day. So it went there, very next day there was a bearish headwind, which also created a false upside breakout. So one could take a short trade right on this candle using the bearish headwind signal. It could be taken using short call vertical. That trade is a good trade when bearish headwind comes or it could be traded using stock as well. Stop would be above recent high. That stop was not hit. As of Friday, it has come to the yellow direction line. One could book some profit or looking at the industry weakness, one could wait for price to fall down more. Let's go back to Q Vital. And this is how sometimes Q Vital helps us identify trades that we were not thinking of. When I look at the vital score of the PRs of Charter Communications, that is the topmost stock, I look for the weakest ones because now we are looking at stocks of an industry that is weakening. And immediately from the color coding, I saw that LBRDA is one of the weakest. The earnings quality is the lowest possible score of one. Relative value score is two out of possible score of 100. So very weak relative value score, internal value not applicable. Doesn't pay any dividend. There is no EPS growth or revenue growth. So from the color coding instantly, you can see that LBRDA is the fundamentally weakest in this list. Let's look at its technical chart. Here we see similar to charter communications, it went up strongly. That is expected because the industry was also going up strongly. After earnings, it had a gap up. It broke above that, gave a bearish headwind signal, but that didn't create a false upside breakout. So we were probably not going to take any trade. At the right edge, we see that price is sitting right on top of memory support. So we don't have any short trade setup yet but it is showing some sign of weakness. Not enough sign to take a short trade, 
but if it went up little bit and broke down below the memory support, it will give us a very low risk entry opportunity and potentially large profit, especially because fundamentally it is one of the weakest. And also because the industry itself is now starting to weaken. That is how, again, we combine the findings from Q Edge industry analysis, Q global technical charts, and Q vital fundamental analysis. So we looked at broad market sector and industry analysis through graphs. Let's spend a few more minutes looking at Q Edge ranking table. If we look for the weakest industries, we can short it largest to smallest and we can see footwear is the very weakest right now 255 rank out of 255 so we could get very profitable trades in nike and maybe other stocks we saw that so for these industries which are weak we are only going to look for short trade swing trading whereas if you see specialized consumer services which was strong for very long and now weakened heavily we may be looking for swing short as well as long term short opportunity. So for longer term investing, long or short, we are looking for a steady color of cyan turning to magenta, that is for short. And for long, it will be steady magenta turning into cyan, that is specialty mining and metal. This is from where I found silica holdings. Clicked on the components went to the industry stocks and you see silica holdings was there so i could find this stock from top down analysis you may sometimes short it by one day if we sort it on friday's rank we can see several oil related industries are coming to the top oil and gas drilling coal related to energy also oil and gas exploration oil and gas exploration transportation oil and gas related equipment and services, oil related services. Many oil energy related industries were strong on Friday and we saw the commodity itself went up. That was another reason I was thinking that US silica holdings may go up if the energy sector also goes up. But generally market is weak, so we could sort it over one day from largest to smallest and marine freight is the worst performer over one day footwear textile apparel so this will give us potential short opportunities for longer term short we could look at the specialized consumer services also home building and home construction it was strong cyan for a long time now heavily declined in rank so you could drill down into some of the stocks look at their fundamentals and also look at their technicals sometimes what i do i just copy this list and if i'm using metastock go to metastock just open the charts using daily template okay another way is i have this work area just edit it delete everything from there paste the symbols Open the stocks from this list one by one. Chart this one. So we went through all the industry sector analysis and also looked at Q edge industry ranking table and how we can identify long term investment, long or short, or swing trade, long or short. I will come back to a few other questions that you asked, but let me close the recording. And therefore, I say that's all that I plan to share in today's class. Thanks for attending. I look forward to seeing you in the next class. Have a great weekend and trade profitably.